Greetings, beloved. Hi, it's Dr. Amanda Noel, Twin Flame Alchemist. Today, we're going to talk about the final stages of the Twin Flame separation, how to know that you're getting close to the end, and how to know if you are doing these phases correctly. So you've gone through the honeymoon phase, you've gone through that that moon place where it can't get any better and you just hope things will stay the same and things come crashing down into the arduous twin flame runner chaser, that separation phase. And then you are working on the healing phase of wholeness or some call it surrender. And you might just be around the corner from the twin flame union, the reunion final phase. Well, let me tell you, it's not easy and there's not run, like one right way to do it. And there are some, some keys, some milestones, some markers that you'll really want to look for to make sure that you're on the right path. One is that you go out of the crazy, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Oh my God, I'm going to mess this all up. What if I'm a failure? What if I can't get better? What if I'm just a hopeless case? What if I'm crazy? What if this really isn't my twin flame and everybody thinks I'm a fool? And you get into that beautiful surrendered place of who gives a crap? I love myself so much and I am love that I just do my best and I surrender the rest to the universe. And yes, we can put our order into the universe if I want it to be this person, I hope for the best with this person. Sometimes it's I don't really know if it's my in my highest good to stay with this person, if that's my twin flame or maybe there's someone else. We get into that place of non-attached attachment or we completely detach. I call it let go, let love. And there is an art to this. I actually teach a six module course called let go, let love at Aphrodite University. So it's definitely, um, it takes some care and deep work and patience at times because we have these egos that want to hold on to someone. I remember not just with my twin flame Jack, but basically every man that was a really kindred spirit, what I call a, a karmic soulmate, someone where there's a deep attachment for learning and growth. I felt like if it's not him, then oh shit, then there's one less person in the universe that it that it could be and therefore scarcity, like it's never gonna happen. I mean, it didn't make sense and now that I think it out loud now, but at the time it was like, if, if this person doesn't love me, I'm unlovable. And it happened many, many times where we'd go into this dark space and I would start beating myself up mentally, emotionally, and I would do the old unhealthy habits such as diet and exercise a little compulsively trying to lose weight and I'd go shopping and get a whole new wardrobe and hope that I'd be more attractive and I'd put it on and I'd still feel horrible. I'd feel empty inside. And it wasn't until I started learning healthy, nourishing spiritual practices, meditation, personal development, working on unconditional love, getting into into the divine feminine healing arts, the mystery school techniques, and a lot of the things that that are being shared out in the world today openly about empowerment, self-love, the chakras, healing, your aura, energy healing, mental well-being, all these tools, I started to actually apply them instead of just trying to physically control my reality by being that overachiever. So if you are someone that when you have gone through your twin flame separation and you are just focusing on how do I look good to get him back, then that's actually not getting you any closer to the twin flame union. If you're doing holistic healing things, you are actually growing spiritually regardless of whether he or she comes back and it makes you feel really good. That's the secret is you feeling really good again. That's the, the wholeness phase or the surrender phase is, is not just letting go and surrendering, but it's, it's surrendering to love. And it really is a feeling as well as a higher power of being and a state of being. It's like dialing a radio station into a higher octave. So you're vibrating at this like 
very powerful bliss and love. And yes, exercise and diet can actually play into it, but not in a self-hating way of like counting calories and control. It's asking, what do I need to feel good? What does my body need to feel good? What does my mind, my spirit need to feel good? Maybe I need to take my shoes off and ground in the grass. Maybe it means becoming a part of a women's circle, or maybe it means launching my business. I know that was a huge part of my healing when Jack, my twin flame, separated. And actually, I started my business when my twin flame counterfeit separated. That was the separation experiences were things that actually blasted me open into my pain. And therefore, I had a chance to either lose the game, to completely go into breakdown and just give up, or I could have a breakdown into breakthrough, which is actually what I did. And I empowered myself so much that both times I reestablished and focused on my business. And that's where I think it's really healthy to have things in your life that are not involving your twin flame that bring you passion, that bring you power, that bring you a sense of purpose. Jack and I, we do merge together and and like I won't I won't lie in almost every way we do merge together and if he were to go a different direction I would still survive and I would find my way to thrive and I would still be on my sole purpose it would hurt like oh my god it would hurt so bad it'd be so painful but I have now learned that any pain that I have I use it for kindling to fire up my flame to um, alchemically transform from that painful lead into pleasurable gold. So I believe that that's what healing is. It's the medicine is learning how to take our pain and turn it into something that's positive that has actually a purpose from our soul. So while I hope that none of you get stuck in separation pain for too long, if you are there now, then ask yourself, how can I really turn this into something positive? How can I get fired up? And at first you're gonna feel like you're faking it. Like, I don't wanna do this other thing. I just wanna sit around and be depressed and mope and check all these blogs to see, is he my twin flame? And eventually, as you start to practice your hobbies, if there's something you like, practice it, like hike. For me, when I was when I was going through my twin flame separation, I, I was pretty sure I was gonna be single. <laughs> I actually was single for about a week and Jack did come back. But I remember why I'm like giggling is I remember my passion was going out to this little field and making love to myself. I would go out there, I'd put on my essential oils and we live next to this hiking trail and there were so many like nooks and bushes and it, nobody ever went there, all right? But there was this like little lawn chair that I found there and I put it behind a, like a couple of trees near this babbling brook and I was like, well, I can hear no one's coming. I can like see down the hill, no one's coming. And so I was coming and I was coming next to this babbling brook. I felt like I was just one with nature. And I started to make love to myself because I had been so dependent on my man and his gorgeous body and his love. I was being made love to instead of being the love and making and, and really just merging with love. So, in my self-pleasuring, I reclaimed my energy with the universe and my universe. And I know it sounds like, oh, this woman's totally crazy. She's, she's pleasuring herself. What does this have to do with twin flames? Well, there's a scientific perk to all of this. I was actually triggering all of the happy chemicals and hormones in my brain and my body. Hormones such as anandamide, oxytocin, the bonding chemical, anandamide is about the bliss chemical, serotonin is that like sugar high feel good hormone. So I was getting myself out of depression and into pleasure. And so by the time my beloved came back, I was like, I, I was a well blissed out woman and it wasn't necessarily easy to see him again. I didn't know if he was coming or going. My heart still had strings attached to it, but I will have to, I have to say that I was the strongest and most blissed out in my pain that I'd ever been. Yes, I was in pain, but I was, I was strong and I was blissed out and like, I was actually happy. There was pain and I was happy. It was very weird. And that's how my orgasmic birth with this uh, Lisa was, is I was tearing, it was painful, but I was having an orgasm and I was having this celestial child come through. 
The other thing is I've given so much of my power away. And this in these final stages, you want to really um You'll want to look at how you have given your power away to your beloved so you can call it back because if you don't do it now, it's never going to happen. And if you come into union, if you're graced by the goddess God to come into union and you've been disempowered, well, oh my goodness, that's going to set a blueprint in place. So many women who are not in their power and they move forward into their relationship and get married, they lock in a sense of disempowerment. So make sure you rev up not only your pleasure, but your power. And financial power is a part of that. I know personally, when I was in my honeymoon stage, I just completely started spending, well, actually I was frugal, but I gave my beloved one of our business credit cards and we didn't have clear boundaries and I did not want him to be unhappy. So he would say, well, I just want to go on this retreat. It makes me really happy. I was like, okay, honey, yeah, put it on the business card because he would take these trainings. He would network with other business people, but it wasn't actually profiting in our business. And it became almost like this pattern where, where Jack would say, well, I need to do this to get away from our our dynamic at home and so i'm going to put it on the credit card and i started to go ooh, you know like i'm not going to spend any money in our business and even in my personal life because i didn't want to stress about money and i didn't want jack to stress about not being able to afford a luxurious life so i ended up in this dynamic where jack was living the life of the king and he was going out and it looked really glamorous i was at home and i was living on the cheap and i stopped going to spas and i stopped eating organic food and like all of these things that I live for. And we were actually making a generous salary and it looked good on paper, but we were both suffering. He was suffering emotionally, I was suffering emotionally. So now I'm a big proponent of healing the inner child issues around money. And we do a lot of deep healing work around this at Twin Flames Live. We have a three day event that happens a couple of times a year. We look at our love blocks. One of my love blocks was very connected with ancestors, root chakra and money. And so that was coming up in our dynamic. It happens with everyone. Everyone has beliefs, blueprints we grow up with around relationships and money. Money is the number one cause of divorce. And we have a 50% divorce rate. And unfortunately we have around an 80% rate at which Americans are in a chain of debt. So we really wanna look at our money when we talk about Twin Flames. So I'm actually gonna share with you, I'm giving a free workshop. It's a one and a half hour masterclass called The Six Steps to Enrolling High-End Clients. And it's, an, it's a free offer. I'm gonna put the link in the bio or, or link in the description box below. It's a course, it's a crash course for those of you that are either running a blissness or are wanting to launch a blissness, a business of your bliss. Maybe you're a light worker, a healer, a twin flame woman. Maybe you don't know what your sole purpose is yet, but you wonder about business and you're wondering how you can quit your day job or you can get out of this crazy economic crash and create a new earth economy. I'm a big, big ambassador of teaching women how to enroll their soulmate clients from around the world into luxurious high-end packages. Now, a high-end package could be a $3,000 group program, or it could be something like a $50,000 high-end VIP premium one-on-one -on -one group code, uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching package. This is something that I have been teaching women how to do for years. It's terrified me in the past to do it myself. I had to hire mentors. It's not one of those intuitive things that you can figure out on your own. So I would love to share my biggest secrets and takeaways that I've learned in my years of working as a high-end priestess. It's totally free, so click the link below. Okay, so again, money, it is so important. It is terrifying to be in a relationship where you're not in your power, where you're not in your financial power. And once I reclaimed my financial freedom, actually Jack, I made Jack cut up that credit card. He actually gave me back the business temporarily. He's like, I'm gonna go do my thing. I'm not happy in the business anyways. And it took us like another year to come back in the business. And we kind of like, we, we, we are combining and we're still years later, we're finding out like, what is, what is the area where we wanna collaborate in? What are the areas where we don't want to collaborate in? And we've had so much fun in the last couple of years since coming into union. It's gotten so much easier, but it's still, you know, we're two people. We're two separate people, you and your twin flame. And so you're going to deal with polarity. You're going, you're going to de deal, you're going to deal with polarity. You're going to deal with confusion. You're going to 
deal with conflict and it's all beautiful and it's all what like stretches us in different directions so we can grow and get strong. So the final phase is you have got this. You're on the right track. If you are showing up, playing full out, getting strong, grounding in your own pleasure centers, definitely recommend the mastertation tool, self-pleasuring. I also highly recommend doing what you can to break free from the toxic Babylonian money slavery systems where you're draining your energy away for some man, some job, some other purpose. Unless you're working for an awesome company that you love working for, align your soul purpose, 100% align your soul purpose with your bliss and with your financial freedom, your power. Then your twin flame will see all of your chakras whole. Those are some common chakras that are broken in women or the root chakra and the sexual chakra, but it could be any chakra. Heal all your chakras into wholeness and you will magnetize your twin flame back into the union because you want it and because you cleaned yourself up in the twin flame mirror with some love Windex. So thank you so much for doing all this hard work. I will see you in the next video. Namaste. Namaste.